I started out memorizing quotes. Then I got a coach. Then I, I started listening to other motivational speakers. Then I started going to seminars and workshops. Then I started speaking on a volunteer basis because I felt it was my calling. A calling is something that you're made for. So a calling is something that you love so much, you do it for nothing, but you do it so well that people will pay you to do it. It's the time. you you If you want to be on top of your game, now listen, this is not for everybody. The masses will use their time being a spectator. We have been conditioned and programmed to be spectators, to watch people live their dreams. You want to use your time living the kind of life that people watch you. Hello? That people pay money to see you. People pay money to buy your books. People pay money to, to go to your seminars or your workshops or to purchase your art or to hear your lecture in a particular subject area. You want to use your time perfecting your skill and your passion to stand out as an expert. Use your time to operate from that consciousness of Henry David Thoreau, who said, do not go where the path may lead. Go where there is no path and leave a trail. I, I talked to a friend of mine yesterday that has a, a new invention. I said, whoa. I said, how long have you been working on this? Well, some time. But I finally got it together. I said, oh, I'm so proud of you. Because if you look around, people are coming up with new ideas. And here's something. If you do this, if you maximize your time, if you just decide, I'm going to find something that I would enjoy doing, and, and then I'm going to carve out the time and have a schedule that I'm working on it every day. Listen to me. Nobody can touch you. I, I, I was just going through the internet the other day. It's amazing the magnitude of craziness that's out there. This computer, the video, it, it, you can use it to start a global business, to earn millions of dollars, to touch millions of people. And it's amazing the, the time and the effort that people put in to produce stuff that's nonsense. It's amazing. There's no competition. There's no excuse today for not becoming successful. Even if you've just lost your job, even if you're going through foreclosure and, and eviction, you can come back. You have no competition because the majority of the people throw their time away and they have nothing to show for it. I remember when I was in Miami and I, I came down and I just finished doing one of the television shows that I'd been paid $5 million for. And I saw a friend of mine named Lefty that we used to shoot pool together on 3rd Avenue and 12th Street across from Douglas Elementary School, Sam's Pool Room. And I said, I said, look, Lefty, I'm about to go back to Columbus, Ohio. He said, oh, great, man. He said, I'll be right here when you come back, holding down the corner. He was holding down the corner. This guy that I used to look up to, he was a very talented and gifted basketball player. He was holding down the corner, have about 12 teeth in his mouth, holding down the corner. Have you seen people who just, that their lives are just stopped? They're not working and producing. Herein my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. We were put here to bear some fruit? No, 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 no. Much fruit to be productive, to make an impact, to create a presence. That's why we're here, to work, work, to, to leave our mark. And so, so do an evaluation of yourself. Ask yourself, if you look at 24 hours, how much time do you spend developing your mind? How much time do you spend Learning a new skill, the economy has changed. 47 million jobs will be lost to artificial intelligence. Majority of money being made on the planet is being made virtually at home on a computer. The game has changed. 
the day where you can go to college and, and graduate and have thousands of dollars of debt and, and be able to get a job working for 40 years and retire in 40 years on 40%, which wasn't enough in the first place, that day is gone. And I'm encouraging you, get around people who are using their time productively because people rub off on you. I, I remember Steve Skilkin, he's out of Columbus, Ohio. He really inspired me to earn my first million. He's a very good friend of mine. And say, hey, Boo and I, we're ready to, to watch the Baltimore Colts and Johnny Unitas. He said, I can't come Sunday afternoon. And I said, why? He said, I'm at the office. I'm working. I said, you the boss, man. Have your staff do the work on Monday morning. He said, I got a goal of earning my first million by myself and not with my father's money. Now I was on the east side of Columbus, Ohio, living in what I would call a human dog house. That's an apartment that does not have a back door. And Steve lived in Bexley, in a home that's valued at probably seven or eight million dollars. I'm getting all ready, me and Boo, Calvin and Patrick, let's sit in front of television, watch Johnny Unitas and the Baltimore Colts live their dreams. And Steve, whose father, Joseph Skilkin, built shopping malls all across the United States. Steve, whose father let, left him and lent his sister millions of dollars, was at work on a Sunday afternoon. And I sat there for a minute, and I got up and I walked out. We we'll said, aren't you, aren't you going to watch the game? I said, no. Hmm. I just couldn't do it. I, I could not do it. And I focused my energy. I said, wait a minute. He's already a millionaire. He inherited millions of dollars, but he had this sense of himself that he didn't want to capitalize on what his father generated. He wanted to be able to outdo his father. See, this is the first generation that will not outdo their parents. The, the, what I've accomplished, what I've done, based upon what Mamie Brown put in me, my mother, I went beyond her. She had a third grade education. I had a 12th grade. I was, I was in the 12th grade, graduated from Booker T. Washington High School in special education. But because of what she put in me, I went far. And, and touch millions of people's lives around the world because of how I used my time. She worked in a cafeteria. She worked for wealthy families. And there's nothing wrong with that, but our children are to go beyond us. I, I was with a friend and, 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 and he called his son and, and wanted to, to, to borrow some money for gas. I didn't say anything, none of my business. My mother used to have a sign on her mirror, oh, Lord, help me keep my nose out of other people's business. <sighs> Miles Monroe, he said, when you know your purpose, that narrows how you use your time. How you use your time. How are you using your time? You have something special. You have greatness in you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. I know you've done some things that, that you're proud of, but I can tell you, based upon my own experience, if you're willing to put in the time with a coach, that's me up in here, up in here. If you're willing to put in the time to learn how you can use your voice, to learn how you can use your story. And the time is now. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. No. Don't take it for granted. You've got more in you. Be willing to learn something new. Be willing to put in the time and the effort to acquire new skills so that you'll be in charge of your financial future. Things about the bottom is about to fall out of this economy.
I know a thing or two. I'm a former elected official. I know the signs. And so the people that are going to come out on top are the people that will put in the time and effort to learn something new, to get the coaching that they need to get, to save them time. You always want to do things that can save you time. From somebody who's been there, done that, and bought the T-shirt. If that's who you are, if you want to save some time learning how you can use your, st your story and your, your knowledge and, 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 and take advantage of this attention economy, if you're serious, I only want to work with people that are serious, that are hungry, because I was hungry. I was hungry. I, I, I'm just not mentally fit to work for somebody for the rest of my life. That's just not me. I don't like going into an office and being all cooped up. No, I'm seeing people I don't want to see every day. Mm -mm. No, you you are here to, to live life on your terms. You've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. You, you're made in the likeness and image of God. If you believe that, then live like that. Live from a place of power. Because that's who you are. You got it like that. And I'll teach you. If you have goals and dreams, I'm putting together a community of people of collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. Every day we'll be talking about how you can develop your mind. Every day we're talking about how you can learn a new skill that will put you outside of the realm of a job, the journey of the broke. Every day. When you're in a community of collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships, and I'm coaching you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. When you are willing to, to open your mind to new possibilities, upgrade your skill set, and get around the right people. I can't tell you the number of intelligent, gifted people who got it wrong, who got it wrong, who got it wrong. They got around the wrong people. And that short-circuited short their potential. Mm. You have something special. You have greatness in you. This is your time. I'm saying it's your time now. <laughs> you have something special. You have greatness in you. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it.